Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Um, hello to uh, what's your name? Hello to all of our CCF Southern California scattered all over the place. South, North, East, San Diego. San Diego. Okay, and guys, we're just starting. You know, um, the pandemic did um, a lot of uh, setbacks to the many uh, churches all over the world, and I think God has an agenda why He did that. And a lot of people have been sent back, churches and Christians all over, including CCF, okay, all over the world. But, you know, we're not going to give up because the mission continues. All right? So wake up the person next to you. Tell the person next to you the mission continues. All right. So um, uh, we are so privileged to be here because there is a lot of opportunities that we need to address as a movement. And... One of the things that we need uh, to really address is to have a very clear vision of why we're doing what we're doing. Why are we here? Why are we all over the place? Why don't we just go back to the usual things that we used to do? All right? The tendency is for people to just go back to what they used to do. But you know, we're not going to allow that to happen because I think God really is leading us to a new direction. And so I would like to really, although I cannot see you, uh, central or south or north, um, I'd like to really, from the bottom of my heart, greet you. The person who introduced me uh, told uh, you that he was handsome. He's deluded, okay? <laughs> and, and, and if our leaders are deluded and are spiritually blind, I wonder what kind of followers we have. <laughs> and that's the reason why this morning, I am going to talk about something that will remove delusion and deception from our hearts, including our leader. But you know, I love him. He's a humble person. He's going to serve. He's going to do everything, but he's deluded. Okay? No, no. By me, I love you. Okay, all of the leaders in our movement, we love you. You know, we may not see you here, but we feel you. And I hope wherever you are, um, know that God is really called and wants to do something in our midst. Is that an amen? Amen. So, CCF East, why don't you wave and tell everybody that you're here. Turn around. Turn around. There's a camera. There, 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 there. You know, um, um, we will find a way to improve our uh, communication system. We're going to put a big screen wherever God set us so that we will see who are the people everywhere. If you're at home, we would like you to turn on your screen and say hi at the same time. Hey guys, we know the situation. We cannot force people to be where they are. We just have to minimize, we have to accommodate people and tell people we love you and we will communicate with you wherever you are. Okay? So this morning, I am going to talk about um, something very unfamiliar to you. It's called vision. Huh? Vision again? Okay? Uh, you know, vision. Vision is something that's so familiar with you because. In CCF, these are the words that our pastor Peter and all of our senior pastors and all of our, I mean, executive pastors are doing. You're familiar with that, right, Jerry? Okay, you're familiar with the CCF mission and vision, guys. You see the screen? We have we have this word vision, and we use it a lot. Um, CCF vision, for example, to see a movement of millions of committed followers of the Lord Jesus Christ meeting in small groups, transforming lives, families, communities, and nations for the glory of God. That's a great vision, isn't it? But my question to you is, do you own it? Or, oh, that's only for the leaders. Oh, that's only for pastors. Oh, let them do it. That's the problem with this vision that is what? Macro. This vision is so big, our Ordinary members may not be risking, and that's why I'm going to talk about something on vision today that will, wow, hopefully refresh and give you a proper perspective. The mission is there, but this morning I'm going to talk about a different, fresh perspective on vision. And I hope, brothers and sisters, as I look at you now, I hope that this will speak to you. I hope that this perspective on vision 
will change your life forever. I'm looking at you right now. I hope that this fresh perspective on vision will change your life forever. I hope this will allow you to engage the Christians around us, your families, your very own. Engage them and then the people around us. And this vision is what I call the micro-personal vision. When I say micro, it means small. Micro. Micro, big. Microscope. That's why you are looking at something small, but it will look big when you put it under the screen. But not only is it small, but it is personal. Meaning, it will be yours. You know, the micro is something that you say, oh, that's Pastor Peter, or oh, that's Pastor Lisa, or oh, that's Pastor Reggie. You don't own it. Because you're talking about millions of people. But the micro, hey, look at me, this is yours. And when you have a micro vision, believe me, it will change your life forever. And I want to share this with you because of one statement, one statement of a great lady who is blind, Helen Keller. Oh, you know her, huh? Hey, well, you know her. Huh? Helen Keller. She made a statement. You know, Helen Keller is a blind lady. She's an American author. She is disabled, but she is an advocate and a lecturer and a great person. Imagine this blind person. You know what this blind person said? Read it with me. The only thing works that being blind is having sight. What's this, what is this lady talking about? Remember, she's blind. Okay? And what is she saying? You know, you're worse than me. <laughs> you know, the only thing worse than being blind is you have sight really times. Look at the person next to you. Does he have eyes? Right. They have eyes, right? But do they have sight? Oh, you wonder. Uh, uh, I, I ask myself a question. Helen, can you actually have eyes for me, right? Really? You know, I discovered what Helen Keller is talking about. And you know what Helen Keller is talking about? You and I are guilty of this. So Reggie is so guilty of this. He's so deluded. He's spiritually blind. I'm talking about spiritual blindness. Many Christians can see. Many Christians can look at you. But from their own physical eyes, but never from the eyes of God. Spiritual blindness. Question. Are you spiritually blind? Why do most or many people usually disappoint each other? You know, how many of you were disappointed by someone yesterday, today, just coming here? Normal. And we're all Christians, right? You know, why do we disappoint each other? Look, look. Husband and wife. Uh, husband versus wife. They, they always disappoint each other. Uh, if you ask them why, ah, him, ah, her, they keep pointing at each other. Now, parents versus children, you know, wow, why are, why is this going on? And even among Christians, believe it or not, what more for those outside the Christian world? But there is, okay, money, okay, I mean, why are we disappointing each other? I submit to you, because of spiritual blindness. You have eyes, but you can't see. Are you guilty of this? Don't raise your hand. I'm just telling you. We need vision. And this vision is what I call micro-personal. Siblings versus siblings. They fight. Okay? You know, I don't have to ask you. Are you all okay with your siblings? Oh, is that, that is the problem, not mine. Oh, see? No, it's quite that. And if you ask them the same thing, they will tell you, it's him, not me. What about Christians versus Christians? Oh, excuse me. I am Democrat. You are. Ah, uh, no way. No? Ex 
excuse me, I am for abortion. Okay, I am not. Okay. Excuse me, I am from the north, you're from the south. No, why do we like that? You know what? I submit to you, you have eyes, but you don't see. You are spiritually blind. And that's why we need this message from Bishop. Am I making sense? Wake up. Say amen. amen. Okay. Christians versus non-Christians. Go to the Lord. You know, in America, we used to have a really united world, but because of conflicts, spiritual blindness. Fear versus fear. Employer versus employee. Employee versus. I can go on and on, right? Classmate to classmate. Huh? Family versus family, Ukraine versus Russia. Why are they? You know, there's a lot of spiritual blindness in this world. Yet they have eyes, okay, but they do not see. Man versus God, or the more. Ouch. You know, this is not an easy message, brothers and sisters, but God is impressing upon me. Until we address this issue, we will never be able to advance. In anything that we do, including our personal agenda. I call that spiritual blindness. Again, look at the person next to you. They have eyes. But do they see? Do they have vision? I'd like to go back to biblical reference and vision. And it says here, Proverbs 29, 18, in the original King James. What does it say? Where there is no vision, the people perish. Mm. Then in the message, I like this. If we, if people can see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. Now, let me ask you. Is there a lot of people stumbling? Are there a lot of people stumbling all over the place and everything? No. Are people perishing? You know, ever since the fall of man, ever since man sinned, okay, the spiral of conflict, the spiral of perishing, the spiral of stumbling all over the place keeps happening and happening and it's happening. You agree with me? And it's endless. And that's the reason why, you know, uh, after man sinned, spiritual blindness was all over and we see that in the Old Testament and the New Testament. I'd like to share with you in Ezekiel 12, verse 1. Then the Lord, then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, you live in the midst of a rebellious house, who have eyes to see, but do not see. Wow. Ears to hear, but do not hear. For they are a rebellious house. Wow, I discovered that if you have eyes and you cannot see, you have no vision. If you have ears and you can hear, you're the bad news. Did you hear me? Uh, look at the person next to you. Just look at yourself. Are you the bad news? Ah, then Luke 10, 23, the New Testament. Turning to the disciples, he said, privately, blessed are the eyes who see the things you see. I say to you that many prophets and kings wish to see the things which you see and did not see them. You see what I'm saying? Even Jesus is saying, oh, there are so many prophets and kings. They like to see what you see, but they cannot see it. But the disciples, they're seeing something. You know why? Because their spiritual eyes are clear. But the people who are blind cannot see what God is doing. And I call that spiritual blindness. What do you want? Physical sight? Or the sight of God? And the reason why there is a lot of spiritual blindness is because there is an enemy called Satan. He's got nothing to do except to make husband and wife fight. Husband and wife be spiritually blind. Children and parents become spiritually blind. Okay, Christian to Christian become spiritually blind. What I'm trying to tell you guys is the reason why things are happening the way they are today, full of conflict, full of disagreement, full of disunity, is because of spiritual blindness. And the reason for that is because there is this guy, Satan, whose agenda is precisely to make that happen. If the good news we preach, 2 Corinthians 4, 3-4, the NLT, if the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, 
It is hidden only from people who are perishing. Wow. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. That's why, that's why even Christians and Christians fight. Because they're blinded. And you know what? According to this statement, if we keep on fighting, maybe we're not even believers. That's a strong statement. But I need to say it. Because if I keep telling you good things and we are not able to address the difficult things because we are spiritually blind, nothing is going to happen to us. Do you agree, Angel? Okay. Huh? Vision. Look at this. Vision is one thing that Satan does not do. You have. As Christians, he doesn't want Christians to have visions. Why? Because when vision comes, Spiritual blindness disappears. Satan wants everyone in this world spiritually blind. So let's pray for Pastor Reggie. And Pastor Reggie will get to see that he's not handsome. Okay? <laughs> that I am more handsome. Right? Therefore, I am more spiritually blind. Uh, okay? I really, I really have to say that okay, because I love my brother. But you know, I have to admit to you, I am blind myself in many ways. I have hurt so many people, and I admit to you the reason why I've hurt my wife, I've hurt my children, I've hurt fellow Christians is because of my spiritual blindness. But you know what? God is always giving us the chance to remove. And that's why we need to rebound. We cannot stay where we are. Okay? Satan is telling you you're hopeless. You're going to be like that forever. No, 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 no. Tony, no. Mommy, no. Hey, guys, Daddy, no. And I'm talking to the men here. Angel, no. Never, never give up. Because Satan is just blinding you and me. So tell yourself, you're handsome. Okay? <laughs> Let's go back to the Proverbs 29, 18. And I want you to see, okay, what this, this verse on vision is talking about. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy, blessed is he. Okay? Let me show you this. Spiritual blindness spells perishing and thirst. Are you with me? If you are spiritually blind, garantizado, you will perish and you will be cursed. Mark, which one do you want? Blessing or thirst? Of course. If you want blessing, then remove the blindness. And that's why the verse is saying here, spiritual blindness spells perishing. What's that? People perish. No vision, perish. I'm glad my family name is Perish. <laughs> perish. Hmm. And then below, it says, if people can see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. What do you mean stumble all over yourself? See, it's all on your face. Sad, isn't it? And you know what? Really, look, look, look at it closely. That's, what, that's what's happening to families. That's what's happening to churches right now. That's what's happening to many Christians right now. They're just fall all over themselves. Answer, why is that happening? There's no vision. Answer, people don't know what God is doing. Are you with me? And then, conversely, ah, vision spells blessings. Who likes blessings? Oh, then what do you need to have blessings? Say it. Thunder. <laughs> if we have vision, we have blessings. What is that? Look at this. He that keepeth the law, meaning you obey the law, what you see the vision, the law, God wants you to do this, you do it. And then what will happen to you? You'll be happy. Bless. What? Be happy. Obey your dad. Even if your dad doesn't make sense, okay? Then <laughs> what happens? If you if you attend to what he reveals, you are most blessed. You know the message says most blessed, not just blessed. You know the word blessed is happy, also oh happy. And look at you people here, you're so happy, you're so happy because you see the food that's going to be eating later, right? Okay. 
Let me give you a choice right this morning. Perish, curse, or bless. Of course, people easily say that. You know, Christians, my fellow brothers and sisters in Southern California, those of you at home, wherever you are, I am giving you a choice today. Your choice. Blessings. Yes. Vision for spiritual awareness. I know in your heart you're saying no. I think God first. And you're asking me, is that even an option? Are you telling me that God is giving us an option to be cursed? No, the question is this. Is this choice even from God? My answer is yes. Did you know that God is the author of curse and the author of blessing? Many people think, oh no, God is not going to curse me because God is not absolutely wrong. Guys. God can curse and God can bless. You know, after the fall, meaning when Adam and Eve sinned, you know what God did? God cursed man out of the garden. But you know, he kept reaching out to man. Because God loves his people, his creation. And then, because man kept on sinning, ang tigas ng ulo, God gave them a choice. And it's here, in Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 19. Deuteronomy is the last book of the Pentateuch. Okay? That's, that's where Moses gave the people the second law. He's reminding the people, before you enter the promised land, I want to remind you of God's law. This is what you and I are supposed to do. And in chapter 30, verse 15 to 19, um, God is talking to the people and to Moses. And God said, See, I have set before you today life and adversity, death and adversity. Wow, these are two contrasting things, right? These are not the same. The same God is telling you, hey, angel, I'm giving you a choice. Right? Prosperity or death and adversity. It's so obvious. We want life. But you know what? God said, in that I command you today that you love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, to keep His commandments, and His statutes and His judgment. If you do that, you may live and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land that you are going to possess. But God, it's not there. Brothers and sisters, CCF Southern California, this is for us today. God did not stop there. He said, but if your heart turns away, and you will not obey, and you will not obey, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them. Oh, you have other gods, guys? Oh, come on. Angel, huh? Okay? How come? How come? Lang nansan mo. Dojo, dojo, dojo. You know, some, some people say they don't have any guts, but I think we have a lot of guts. Our jobs. Our possession. Other people. Hey, come on. If you say you don't have other guts, you're blind. And that's the reason why God is saying, I'm warning you. Okay? I want you to wake up. Okay? Then verse 18, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. Ooh. Okay? In other words, if you're spiritually blind and you have other gods and you're denying it, God is saying, you have no choice. You will surely perish. You will not prolong your days in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess it. And then verse 19, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. So choose life in order that you may live and you and your descendants. Choose life, God said. How can you choose life? Okay, remove your spiritual blindness. Only obey God with all of your heart. Don't even turn to other gods. That's what he's saying. But if you are spiritually blind, most likely today, you have other gods you don't. That's why we're addressing it today. Again, after the fall, God kept reaching out to man. You know, God, you have to know God's heart. God will never give up on you. He keeps reaching to you, but because of the hardness of your heart, He's going to say, hey, 
since you are so stubborn, I am going to let you perish. All right? So, you know, my question to you today, blessing or curse? You answer to yourself. I know you're going to say blessing. Okay, please answer this question honestly today. Um, and wherever you are, if you're in the south, or if you're in the north, um, the, please look at your members, leaders, and uh, Joel, uh, Barnell, look at your members, okay? I'm going to ask this question. And please answer it honestly. Okay, in your life today, here and now, hmm, are you blessed? Or are you cursed? Okay. Hmm. Why are you asking that question, Pastor Dan? Is that biblical? Oh, the answer is yes, because I told you already, God gave us a choice, right? So I'm asking you today, are you blessed or cursed? Ah, okay. Those of you who say they're blessed, raise your hand. Wow. Very good, okay. Many, many people usually raise their hands. Christians will always raise their hands. But if I ask this question, oh, Marnell, did you see that? Uh, ah, did you see how many? Here, almost everybody raised their hand. Okay. Now, let me ask a question. Are you first? Raise your hand. Oh, there's one person who raised his hand. I, I think he's hungry. Okay. Okay. You see, very few people will acknowledge the curse. <clears throat> you know why? Because they don't even understand what curse means or blessing means. So let me let me help you understand whether you really bless the curse. Okay? I mean it's not easy to say you are blessed because I like the word. I am not cursed, I don't like the word. I don't want you to think that way. I want you to understand what it means to be blessed. Let me ask you this question then. What do blessed people usually do? And then what do cursed people usually do? Ah, oh, yeah, nah. Ha, ha, ha. Now you know whether you're cursed or blessed. Okay? You see, you answered it right. What do blessed people usually do? They bless other people. My question is to you is this. Do you want to know you're really blessed? Are you blessing other people? Or you just keep blessing to yourself? Don't tell me you're blessing and not blessing other people. Or are you cursing other people? Kun! Yang ka na naman. Sabi ko siyo kung kainin nga ni. Pero why you cutting me? Aren't you cursing people? I call that spiritual blindness. We do it, but we don't see it. <clears throat> are we blessing people? Or are we cursing people? So I'm not going to ask for a show of hands right now. Are you blessed? Or are you cursed? Who answered it? Do you know that? Let's enter divine. Let's know what bless means. Let's let means bakarios in Greek. It means you receive God's favor. Are you receiving God's favor and it's overflowing? That's what bless means. It means meaning is you're happy, you're fortunate, you're good, you're in a position of favor. God is always favoring you. I was uh, telling um, our young people, you know, you know, if God is with you, you can expect God's favor to you. Happy, you're feeling associated because God is always there blessing you. Are you blessed? Favor, it's a noun. They pick someone who receives divine favor most of the time. And then bless people, they always bless other people. Amen? Okay, now let's take a look at Turks. Kelala. Okay, Hindikita Kelala. Okay, Turks, vilification. Execration, hatred, adjective, hateful, abominable. I, I don't like this word, but you know what? The next curse people curse me. Now tell me, are most people less curse? Hmm. Um, imagine now a family. This is what Pastor Reggie is telling Pastor Reggie. 
in all of our leaders. Imagine how exciting a community, a city, a nation, or a world where people are blessing one another. Can you picture it? Is it going to be a good place? Oh, people are blessing one another. Okay? You know, later on, I really would like to see this group blessing one another. In the north, I really want to see you guys blessing one another. Okay? In the south, I want to see you guys blessing one another. You're about to put the food in your mouth, give it to someone. Okay? That's blessing someone. Or you ask someone, if you see someone struggling, can I help you? That's blessing someone. Is that natural in our midst? If you see, if you can imagine a word like this, I would call that good and great, right, Manny? A great, blessed world. And I want that. You know, so many people want this, but this seems not to be happening. You know why? Because of spiritual blindness. I mean, even among Christians. Imagine now the exact opposite. A family, community, nation, people, where they are cursing one another. Wow. You see it? They don't like each other. They're cursing each other because they only insist on what they want. Now, is that a better word, you think? No. That's an ugly word. And it's bad. It's disturbing. Mark, it's cursed. Don't even try. But you know what? Uh, a city, a community, a nation starts with a family. So I'd like to share with you that if we want to see a black world, Let's start with a blessed family. So look at the person next to you, especially if you sit down with the family. You tell them, can you bless one another? Okay. Daughter, mommy, tell each other, can we bless one another? There you go. Okay, can we bless one another? I hope so. Okay. Now, uh, let's be honest. Okay. Why do we want that kind of world? If we look at the world we live in today, Okay, is it happy, blessed, or cursed? You be the judge, okay? You be the judge. You know our world today, it says 22% of Americans say they are always or feel lonely and isolated. Did you see that? 22%. In other words, one out of five Americans, if you, you go back to sleep, talk to five, one will say, I'm lonely. And you know what? Their loneliness will affect their mental health, their physical health, their personal relationship, and their ability to find jobs. Now tell me, is this a good word or a bad word? Okay. And then, look at the, the, the young people. Teen depression. Now, look at that. 20% of our young people today are depressed. Okay. Meaning, uh, they experience depression. They're sad. And then, 50%. If you look at that one, uh, from 2011 to 2015, the increase was 50%. And so, can you imagine the rate of depression among young people today is... It's even higher. I don't know if you do you have friends who are depressed. Yeah, right. It's true. You don't you you look at them. Why are they depressed? You know because they cannot get what they want. They have a lot of dreams and they're not happening. Or their parents are fighting. Their parents are divorcing. Or you know many things are happening. And that's the reason why they're depressed. Now let me ask you a question. Um. Oh, by the way, this is the state of our world today in general, the USA. My question is this. That's for curse. People are blessed here. Oh, yeah. I'm asking for the word, Wilma. Okay. I know you want to be blessed, but I'm asking the word we live in today. Is it blessed or curse? Most likely it's curse. Ah, uh, Sharon. Hey, hey, this is the word where our children are living in right now. And sooner or later, they too will be affected, whether you like it. Can we do something about this world? Absolutely. That's why we're here. But we will do it one family at a time if we remove the spiritual blindness. One family. You know, young children today, teen pregnancy, drug addiction, you, it's all over the place. You know, the, the death, the overdose death in America, for example, look at that. It keeps rising and rising and rising. People are dying because they want to take drugs. Why do they want to take drugs? Mark? They want to forget, right? They don't want, they don't want to see what's going on. And that's that's why they just want to take those things that can make them forget how bad their world is. Okay, my question. Let's talk first. Top family issues today. Look at this, huh? Top family issues today. Number 10, materialism. Oh, 
okay, I need to buy three cars, one Tesla, another Tesla, and the third Tesla, okay? They, they, they want good things, nothing wrong with that, but because we are so influenced by the world, everybody is materialistic. But it's important to have guns, okay? I was guilty of this. I was so materialistic, I wanted to get rich, I forgot my money. That was another strategy. Negative media influence, lack of communication, financial pressure. Because of materialism, you get yourself into big debt, therefore you need to have. Number five, lack of discipline. Number four, absent father figure. Oh, that's me again. When my children were growing, I was so busy, I was spiritually blind. I thought I was giving them, wow, good house, good education, you know, all the support, but I mean, was not there. And the result was really, really sad. Busy. Because of materialism, you'll be so busy. And then number two, divorce. Wow, did you know that 60% of married couples, even in the world today, are divorcing already? And then number one, what? You know, the people in the world today don't like to become Christians anymore. Okay, you begin to say, why? So what do they see? Because they're seeing also depressed Christians. Depressed Christians. Well, this explains why they're so busy in the world. So busy. These are the top 10 issues. My question, again, best for first. Your choice is to be blessed, but the reality is your choice. Right, Tony? Okay, that's why you're the only one who raised your hand, right? I should also raise my hand. Yeah. <laughs> Millennials, millennials, 70% of millennials, the young people today, raised in church, are no longer engaged in church. They want to leave the church. Okay? I'm so glad that we have two young people, we have four young people. I hope, you know, you're not here because of us, you know, and I hope that, you know, you will realize that, you know, God is bigger than your parents or your situation. Faithful to God rather than to the people around. And then I, I, I want I want you to see that 70% of your your peers are struggling with that thing. And the reason for that is because of what they see. One fourth of millennial Americans claim they don't have no religion. Millennials, the millennials are the most stressed out generation in the world. Okay? Uh, less than first. First. In Asia, Asia, tops. You know, where did you come from? You look very Asian to me. Okay. Where did you come from? Okay. In Asia, you know, Asia tops family issues, top 10 LGBT population in the world, Asia, top 10 most prostitutes, Asia. Okay. But we're in America, you might say, yeah, but where you came from, it's a first world, right? You know, uh, engage, engaging in pornography, these are all data, but let me show you here the latest example. Uh, mga bansa sa ASEAN na may mataas na bilang ng teenage pregnancy. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, countries in Asia where teenage pregnancy is number one. Do you see the number one? Yeah, the Philippines, right? Why are you rejoicing? We're number one? That's spiritual blindness. It's like Pastor Benji saying, his hands up, put it back. Okay. Brother, Question, let's prepare. I can go on and on. Lately, what happened in Uvalde, Texas? Huh? You know, school shooting again. The highest ever, I think, that died. Or even second to the highest next to What is that? Anyway, hey, you know, it's all over the place. And then the young people today are already demonstrating. What are they demonstrating? They're saying thoughts and prayers don't save lives. You know what they're saying? Gun will report. Gun will report. Wait. Meaning what? They want guns for teenagers. Tell me, is this blessing or curse? I don't know with you, but I can go on and on. And I hope you guys have already awake to see that enough is enough. You know, but what can we do? You might say, I'm all alone. No. If we're going to come to this together, I would like to believe that we can do something. Okay? Really, if God is with us, we can do something. But if we are going to be 
lacking forever, we will not be able to do something. Based on the stats, ladies and gentlemen, I humbly submit to you, our world is first. And now why, you ask, why? Is it possible that there are more first people than blessed people today? Yes or no? You know, what do blessed people do, Tony? They bless others. What do thirst people do? They curse others. So if there are no thirst people, and there are more people cursing one another, my goodness, you will have a curse word. Does that make sense? Or am I blubbering stupidities here? Makes sense, right? It's possible that there are more thirst people in this world. They curse others, and others react. Creating a curse word without even knowing it. And the cycle continues. Right, Manny? You know, it's so sad. But you know, tell you, you know, if we don't admit to the problem, we will never solve the problem. If we keep saying, ah, everything will be okay, God will take care of it in the end. Yeah, definitely in the end. What about now? What about your children? What about the people that you love? Okay. So where does it begin? It starts with removing spiritual blindness because spiritual blindness is the very reason why we are so cursed because there's no vision. The Bible says without vision, the people perish. Again, we are spiritually blind to that situation. Now, brothers and sisters, north, south, east, TCM, SOTA, can you see the problem of the world? Now, I want you to scale this down to your family, to your workplace, to your community, and look at the people around us. Can we do something? The answer is yes. Have a vision. Because you have vision, and you understand what the vision is, we will be most blessed. Because God said so, I didn't say so. If we are thirst ourselves, then don't be surprised when we have thirst. You might say, how come God is loving? How come God created this world to bless the world? How come? You keep saying, how come and how come? You know, God is saying, I've done my part. You do your part. Okay? Since the beginning, God's heart was to bless man. Look at this. God said, let us make man into our image. Can you imagine God wants you to be like God? You know, is God blessed or cursed? So he wants you in his image. Because God wants to bless us. Because God wants us to rule over the fish and the sea and everything. Verse 27, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. God blessed them. And then, you know, I want you to imagine the Garden of Eden. Okay? Adam and Eve right there, naked. They're not even bothered about being naked. And they were with the lions. Okay, today, if you sit down with the lions, laugh to you. Okay? Eat you. They were even playing with lions. Okay? Why? Because there was what? Complete presence of God, and God was in complete control. It was a blessed world. You see what I'm saying? You know, but what happened? But Satan, the enemy, opposes that and made man curse. What happened? You know the story. The serpent tempted Adam and Eve, okay? And then they man to sin and man sin. And what happened? They were driven out of paradise. Okay? When that happened, they realized they were naked. They became shameful. Okay? What did they realize? They were set out, separated from God forever. What do you call that? Most curse. So let me show you, let me show you, uh, uh, you know, um, sin took control. Okay? When, when sin took control, you have Cain and Abel killing. Okay? And then you have the angels having uh, uh, marrying uh, women of the earth. These are all distortion of the world. Okay, and then um, uh, uh, the people were 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 frowning at, at Noah because Noah was trying to build an ark, and they don't understand what Noah is doing. They were really uh, uh, cursing and cursing Noah for being stupid. And then what happened? Um, sinful mankind was destroyed. God killed mankind. Can you imagine that? Don't tell me God is loving. Yes, God is loving. But God is just as well. God can kill. Especially when there is a restraint of sin happening in our midst. Are you with me? And then, but of course, man rebooted it. Huh? 
He chose Noah. Noah was in the ark. And Noah was used by God to bless the animals whom he took and to bless his children because God wanted a people. Then what happened? Was there an improvement? No. Sooner than later, sooner, later, sooner than later, Noah fell right away. Only you know the Bible, right? And then what happened? It escalated to the Tower of Babel. And the Tower of Babel was such a picture of pride and selfishness that God separated and sent scattered mankind away because no longer can man control the pride. Sin continued to rule mankind. So let me show you a spectacle. Man moved from being most blessed to being most blessed. Guys, I want you to see this, okay? On the right side is most blessed, eternal life, in God's presence, that's, that's our destiny. That's what God wanted us to do from the very beginning. But because we sin, the left happened. Most curse, eternal death, separation from God, what is what left. Now, that is the spectrum. Man was most blessed when he was created. He was thrown all the way to the left. Okay? Most curse. Because he started to become selfish. You understand me? Okay. What happened since then? There was the creation of a first world that kept growing and growing and growing and we are living right in it. Am I making sense, brothers and sisters? Is it good for us to address this? Or you might say, yeah, let Pastor Tanji address that. Let Reddy address that. No! We want you to address it. Because it all starts with the time mark. Don't ever think that you cannot do anything. Don't ever think that you cannot do anything in your youth. You can. And that's the reason why I'm so passionate about this. That's a cursed world. But you know what? You might say, is this God's vision for us? No. This is not God's vision for us. He gave us a free will, but we chose other God. And we keep refusing that we are sinning and we are spiritually blind. And that's why we're cursed. But you know what? God does not stop. God initiated a redemption plan. He initiated a redemption plan. Jesus, through the seed of Abraham, to move man from, again, curse to blessing. God does not stop. God does not give up. And it's really all up to us to support that. And that is what I call the vision. And that's why I want you to know the vision. Okay, God initiated the redemption plan through Abraham. Look at this. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, how the Lord said to Abraham, Go forth from your country, from your relatives, from your father's house, to the land which I will show you. Then listen, I want you to really take a hard look at this. God said to Abraham, I will make you a great nation. Who is Abraham? He is your brother. Okay? Okay? Whether you like it or not, you look like Abraham. Okay? And God promised something great to Abraham. Sabi niya, I will make you into a great nation. And I will bless you. And I will make your name great. I like that. And you shall be a blessing. Oh, you, I don't know with you, but I don't want to be a blessing. You know, you, you know, my brother-in-law is blessing me. And sometimes I don't know if I'm returning the table. So when we play golf next time, it's going to be in 2020 store. <laughs> okay? And Tony always blesses me. I don't know why I'm blessing them. You know, I wish I would be conscious of blessing. So when, before we go out of this room, please realize who you are. You know who you are? You are a great nation. Tell the person next to you, you are a great nation. And, and your name will be great. Tell the person next to you. Okay? <laughs> Okay, not tell the person next to you, you shall be a blessing. So, tell the person next to you, you shall be a blessing. And then God said, hey, I like it. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. Oh, I can already imagine my enemies, you might say. You know what? Okay, but, you know, before you, before you curse your enemy, bless your enemy. Okay? <laughs> but, you know, if you are blessing your enemy and your enemy keeps cursing you, garantisado, God will curse them. God will destroy them. 
But if you yourself are cursing your enemy, oh, God will also curse you. See, that's spiritual blindness. Many times he's just right in front of us and we cannot even address it. And then he said, I will bless those who bless you. And then he said, in you, angel. In you, virgin. In you, all the time. You will be the great source of blessing. But if you don't believe that, you're spiritually dead. Do you believe it? You are a source of blessing. Bless your mom, your dad, your classmates, husband. That's what? Very young. You can be a source of blessing. I'm telling you that when your mom is not here. Okay? I'm telling you, you can be a source of blessing. So tell the person, the person next to you, in you, all the families around you will be blessed. Tell them that, in you. All the do you believe that? If you don't believe it, then you're spiritually blind again. You keep rejecting God's promise because you think you know. No, you're you're deluded. You're deceived. This is the vision of God for Christians. What is the vision of God of uh, vision of God for Christians, Pastor Reggie? In us. All the families of Southern California will be blessed. Wow! Can you imagine if all of the other Christian churches will share this vision, Tony? Can you imagine if all the Pilchai will unite and help all of the other Pilchai Christians to do this, Tony? It will be a great world, isn't it? But it should start from us. We should remove our blindness and know God's vision for us. Southern California, let's each have God's vision. A vision that in you all the families will be blessed. And you know what? If we do this, we will be most blessed to the best of us. If you believe this, we will be blessed. If you say yes, the moment you step out of here, you will start cursing people. I hope we change. Right? Now, again, this is micro personal. You know, I, I, I just have to make this clear with you. God is a holy God. God does not want sin. God's holy justice resulted in us being cursed. Sinful, fallen. We choose to do that. Adam and Eve chose to do that. But in God's love, He did something different. He provided a redemption plan for cursed man to be free and once again to be blessed. That's what He wants. And not just blessed, by the way, but to be most blessed to bless others. Wow, I'm so passionate. I really would like to see the Southern California to start thinking about this and be excited. You know, how can you bless others unless God bless you first? Mama? Now, would you like God to bless you first? Sure. So how can I bless other people if I myself and suffering? You know, the secret is this, Sharon. When God blesses you, it's so easy to bless others, right? Question is, God bless you. Again, be honest. Okay? You know, what you have experienced today, while good, is the enemy of the best. Many Christians today are settling for the good. But in fact, the best is there. You understand what I'm saying? They are still the best that God wants. But God is withholding it because of our spiritual blindness. Because we don't see the vision. And the vision is that we will be like Christ. Okay? Um, and many of us remain monsters to curse others. This redemption plan is in the Son of Jesus Christ. As Pastor Becky said this morning when we started. Jesus Christ, he became the sacrifice man for the forgiveness of sin. And look at John 3.16. I really would like you to now I cherish how beautiful John 3 16 is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him, Jesus, will not perish. Curse, right? But have eternal life, most blessed. You see what I'm saying? From the very beginning, God's vision is very clear. He wants you most blessed. But you have to believe in Jesus Christ to be saved. You have to be saved first. So, how come, how come you might say, yeah, I'm saved. I accepted Jesus Christ a long time ago. But let me ask you a question. Have you changed? 
how come we seem to remain first? Many Christians are asking me this question. How come we seem to be going around the wilderness? Now, we have to answer this question. If you don't help yourself answer this question, and if you don't know how to answer this question, we will forever remain in the wilderness. But if we learn how to answer this question, what's the question? Why do we seem to remain cursed as evident by the present world? The present world is cursed. Why can't we? Yeah, because because the end will come anyway. Many, many, many Christians will say, oh, let it be. Okay, because the end is coming and we'll all go to heaven. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. You know, there are so many people out there looking for us. They don't want to remain cursed. But what do we do? We say, ah, we write them off. We cancel them. No, guys, what if they are your children? What if they are your spouse? What if they are your parents? Would you allow that? Would you cancel them? Of course not. So, what do we do? Very simple. First, there are so many of the human kind around you that are really first not saved. Therefore, we need to share the gospel with you. Are you with me? And you cannot share the gospel with them unless you're blessed. <laughs> Am I right? If you are cursed and you're sharing the gospel, who will believe you? Ajay? No one. But if you're overflowing with blessing, then you're happy. Ah, so easy to share the gospel. Aren't you agree? Okay. You agree? They're perishing. They're not saved. So, secondly, there's a vast majority of Christians who are just saved, but they remain not trusted. What, what am I saying? There are so many Christians today who only like to be saved, but they don't like to be saved. Oh, I'm going to heaven anyway. So why are you like that? Oh, here, it's okay. In heaven, I'm going to heaven. Maybe you're not even going to heaven, brother, sister. Okay? You're deluded, right? You're spiritually blind. They're not transformed, growing in Christ's life. How come? Okay, let me show you the secret. Okay? Uh, Satan keeps deceiving and blinding many of us believers that we are still naked to be ashamed of us. Oh, you're no good. Oh, you're still cursed. Why are you doing this? So what do you do? You know, as a Christian, you say, no, no, I might as well keep quiet. See what happens? If you keep believing what Satan is saying, then you will never win. So, brothers and sisters, our fallen, deceitful part that set us captive and imprisoned continue to tell us, no, no, we are not really saved or hopeless. Satan is using our inside heart and denying who we really are. And therefore, we should fight that and say, no, I'm a child of God. I'm a born, born again Christian. I know my vision and I'm going to change from this day forward. If you don't do that, we will never advance. In fact, if we continue to fall into our favorite sin, how many of you have favorite sin? Temper. Okay. Grumbling. Uh, okay. Impatient. Uh, they, they are small sins, okay? But if you keep doing them, Satan keeps making you feel guilty, you are not feeling saved or blessed but cursed. So can Christian be cursed? Yes or no? Louder. Okay? And all you have to do is to admit that your curse and do something about it so that that curse will turn into a blessing. Okay? And the only way we can do that is to know the secret. It's very discouraging. But here is what I want us to do. I want you to understand why it's easy. Again, it's because of spiritual weakness. People lack vision. So, many people are here. If you situate them in the spectrum, Many people are in that circle. They are in the middle. Okay? You probably are in the middle. Or I, I hope you're not on the extreme left, even if you claim to be a person. Okay? I hope you are in the middle. And we, be, we, we live in a first world. That's where we are. And you know what? Because there are many people who are not saved, and because even the saved people are not transformed, people are cursing one another, right? <laughs> And that's the reason why we have a world that's situated right on the left. So what do we need to do? We pray that this will move to the right. 
I will, I will, I will repeat. We pray that this will move to the right. Meaning, we have to replace this cursed world with a blessed world where most people are blessing one another. And who will be that? You and I. We, the family of Christians, will start to bless one another. And we need to see many people say, we need to share the gospel. We need to disciple one another, transforming in Christ like in Sudan. That's the reason why we keep repeating and repeating. We share the gospel, you know, model Christ likeness. Make disciples, you know why? Because that's the only way that you can be seen to be completely most blessed and blessed. Move from left to right. Yes. Okay. Not go from center to no, no, please don't do that. Keep moving people from the left to the right. That's what we need to do. The question is how? 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 And I will end quickly with this because I think you know how. We've been repeating it to you as CC efforts. We've been telling you how, but you just keep ignoring it. And maybe the reason why you're ignoring it is because you're spiritually blind and you don't know that you're living in a cursed world. Am I making sense? How? Very simple. How? So again, before I show you the how, let me show you again this question. We are cursing one another. We are disappointing one another. Again, this is because of spiritual blindness. Why? 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 Because our fallen, sinful hearts persist and remain. Okay? Why are we here? Guys, we are here. We are gathered together in, in different locations because we want to spur a movement. Just like what Pastor Reggie said. We're not here to do the useful church. Meaning, we gather, we sing, we hear preaching, and then we go home. We're not going to do that anymore. We're here to realize God's design and purpose or vision for us. Angel, what's his vision for you? To make you most blessed. To bless others, not for us. And what's his vision for you? He wants you to be saved, and not just saved, but Christ like us. Okay? How are you going to do that? He wants you. The devil. See, even the enemy does not want us to do that. He's the one really stopping us from preaching. And right now, he wants us to persist and to remain where we are. We don't want to continue to remain where we are. We are God's children and we have to know his purpose for us, his vision. And his vision and purpose for us is to be most blessed to bless others. By breaking the curse and lies of Satan to live free and born in him. So I want to I wanna pause right here to really address what the real issue is. The real issue is we have a heart that is very insecure. Can you see your heart? Can you see the heart of other people? But you know, I'd like to tell you in Jeremiah 17 verse 9, God is giving us a warning. God said, the heart is more deceitful than all else. Desperately simple. You can understand. You know, if you look at your heart right now, you think you understand your heart? Please, start saying right now that you can never understand your heart. Because your heart is cursed. And your heart will always lead you to the wrong path. Right? Who can understand it? So many Christians today think they are saved and born again, but they remain unchanged. Why? Because their heart is telling them, oh, you're saved, don't do anything. See? These are Christians already. We're guilty of that. But we have to acknowledge that our hearts are deceitful. Their deceitful hearts tell them they're okay, but in fact they remain worldly, fleshly, cursed, continuing in their respective decisions. Our Spiritually blind, the simple heart must be replaced. So tell yourself, I will replace my heart. Tell the person next to you, let's replace our hearts. Replace our hearts with what? New hearts. New hearts that know God's vision of Philippians 2 3 to 8 Christ likeness. Again, Philippians 2 3 to 8 Christ likeness is the one thing that we need to be able to become most blessed. I'm telling you this from the bottom of my heart. This is not just a a, a a fact I'm telling you to memorize. I'm telling you, this is God's vision for you to be Christ-like. 
And you have to know exactly what Christ likeness looks like. And you have to make that deceitful heart into a Christ like heart. Replace that old heart with a new heart. Am I, am I, am I making sense? Um, most of you have already memorized this with CCF LA and the rest of CCF ICP. I have time and again for the last eight years asked you to memorize this. Okay, and what do we say? You recite it every day and practice it every day. Do nothing but selfishness or empty deceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourself. Do not really look out to your own personal interests, but the interests of others. And it's an attitude, it's an attitude to yourself as well as to Christ. You know, when this is internalized, your heart will be replaced, and your heart will become brand new, Christ like. How can we have new hearts that know God's vision of Philippians 2 3 to 8 Christ like principles? Do you like a Philippians 2 3 to 8 Christ Christ like heart? Huh? Hello? Yes. 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 Okay, how? Be born again. Right? Okay. Now, if you're here today, all of us, north, south, east, those of you who want you need to really hear a born again heart. If you are struggling with your life for the past 20 years and it seems to be going around in circles, don't be ashamed to ask yourself the question Am I born again? Am I saved? And I'd like to pause right now and give you the opportunity between you and God. Ask yourself the question Are you really born again? And for you to be born again, you have to admit that you're a sinner and you can save yourself. That you are spiritually blind. And that even though you've been going to church for a long time, maybe you have not really understood Jesus Christ as saving you and removing all of your sins. Number two, you have to admit that only Jesus can save you. Only one sin curses you. And that therefore, Jesus has to remove all of your sins. All! past, present. And then you have to accept him into your heart as a way of saying, I want you, I need you, because I want to replace my old deceitful heart with a new heart that is like yours. And then receive him into your life. I'd like to pause right now. And just say a prayer for those of you who are struggling. Close your eyes. You can join God. Tell God, God, I don't want to be cursed. I want to be blessed. But I've been in the church for a long time. I've been a Christian for a long time, but I don't know why I'm feeling short. Always falling short, even cursing the people around me that I have known. Lord, maybe I'm not saved. Forgive me. And ask for your forgiveness. Once again, I admit I need a new heart. I need to be born again. I need to be saved. Lord Jesus, I need you. You're the only one who can save me from sin. Thank you for dying on the cross and for forgiving through your blood all of my sins, past and present. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. You're the only one who can save me. I need to be truly born again. Into, into my life. I don't like this curse going around me. I am cursed myself. I don't like this anymore. I want to be this curse. I want to be like you. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my son. You know, if you pray that prayer, even though you're a Christian for a long, long time, God will not change me. In fact, it may be the beginning of a wonderful uh, time for the rest of your life. I believe in you have a new heart. And that new heart may work and change you and not deceive you. And then, for those of you who are sure of your salvation, that you are not changing, maybe you are just saved, but you are not obeying all of God's commands. The Bible is saying it's not enough for you to be saved. You have to continually obey God's command to be transformed to become Christ. I want to pray for you. If you've been struggling with sin and you cannot even overcome it, maybe 
We just need to surrender right now. For those of you who are not becoming Christ like, all you have to do is to obey God's command. So, Lord, I lift up to you all of us right now. Those of us who are struggling with our favorite sin and repeating repeat it over and over again, I would like, Lord, for all of us to stop right now and say, Lord Jesus, we are saved. And from the beginning today, we are going to obey all of your commands, however small that it is. If it's temper, I will, I will, I will let go of my anger. If it's unforgiveness, I will forgive. If it's impatient, I will be more patient. If it's greed, I, I, I will be less greedy. If I, you know, Lord, everything that is that is small. If I am, if I am, if I am to gossip, I'll stop gossiping. Lord, will you address that the petty sin that keeps making me curse? And I want to obey you from this day forward. I want to be transformed, Christ like to be most blessed. Because that's a vision. Lord, I ask again, please enable me and teach me how to become like you. Like you, you have said. In Jesus' name, I pray. You know, a new heart, you pray that a new heart that you have right now will see and do God's vision for you. What's God's vision for you? Very simple. Romans 8 28. God causes all things to work together for good. If all things are working together for good, that's blessed, right, Tony? You're going to be happy because all things are working together for God. Okay? Ah, really? Yes, even the small things. So, how will God cause all things, or rather, who, uh, what, how, what will make God cause all things to work together for good? Verse 29, for those who be for you, He also predestined to be more conformed to the image of the Son. In other words, if you want to be most blessed, be Christ like. What is Christ likeness? Philippians 2 3 to 8. You practice it every day. And how do you do that? Very simple. A new heart will see and do the mission of making disciples or be disciples. So tell the person next to you, be a disciple, model of Christ And so, CCF, I'd like to end. Our blind and deceitful hearts needs to be confronted. How? Okay? Let's not just be saved, but not transform Christians from this day forward. Let us be blessed Christians, okay? Let's stop being cursed Christians. Let's practice the Jesus is my Savior and Lord lifestyle. Jesus is not just your Savior. Jesus is your Lord. Meaning, you're not just going to heaven. You're going to obey all that Jesus is commanding you. Obey all what? Obey what your parents are telling you. Obey what your leaders are telling you. Obey what your sister is telling you. Obey what your Christian brother or sister are telling you, because you are in sin. It's a lifestyle of making Jesus Christ as Lord. And finally, be intentional disciple makers. Each one of us. We will teach you. We will have intentional discipleship training. Pastor Reggie will set that up for us. Because when we all become disciples, even every member of disciple, we will all become blessed. And disciples are blessed. Are you with me? You want to be blessed, most blessed, be a disciple. And disciples are Christians with Jesus, Savior, and Lord, my son. You know, look at this. Um, uh, we know this. We keep repeating this. But this is something that you need to personalize, now, starting with your family. Go make disciples of your family. Baptizing them, Savior, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to obey all or observe what I commanded you. Jesus as Lord. And then what will happen? The promise blessing. No, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. If Jesus is with you always, 24-7, I keep telling ourselves, you will be most blessed. Not cursed. If Jesus is with you 24-7, and you, he will be, because you are disciples, you will be most blessed. And you know what? Most blessed are the disciples the best of us. I keep pounding and pounding on this, because we are so blind, we don't know this. And I will close by challenging everyone before I call Pastor Reggie here. Imagine a uh, family, community, city, nation, world, where people are most blessed and they are blessed with them. That will be our great blessed work that Jesus will build for you, your family, and for me here in the whole USA, starting with Southern California, if and only if we become Christ like. Intentional disciples, one and all. Meaning, we are most blessed to bless and not curse.
pray that God make us excited to accept your words. Glory to God and God alone, as we most become most friends in those words. Family first, and then God. You know, God 11, 10, 11, 6, 7. Behold, they are one people. They all have the same language, and this is the to God. And now, nothing will stay purpose to do if you do not see. You know what I'm saying? If you are united in your vision together as a family, nothing is impossible. How do you believe this? This came from God. What is preventing us from making the impossible become possible? We are not united. So let's unite ourselves. Let's talk to your family members. Hey, from now on, let's be Christ like. Let's model Christ like next to you. Let's disciple them. And so Southern California, again, please, let's have the same language, united in the purpose of Christ like disciples who are most blessed and blessed others. And our Almighty God is will definitely who who to whom nothing is impossible will make CCF Southern California a very big movement seeing the plenty. And I would like to pray for us right now. But before I pray for us, I would like to flash this discussion questions. Take a picture of it if you want to. I want you to, dis to discuss between you and your family where you are in this spectrum. You rate yourself from 1 to 10 where you are. Are you most blessed or are you most cursed? 10 being most blessed, 1 being most cursed. And then uh, together, rate your family whether you are really a family that bless each other or curse each other. Don't hesitate to be truthful. And then number two, what do you commit to do to become most blessed and blessed others? Starting today. Be specific in how you will bless others. Oh, I'll, I will pray for him. Oh, I will forgive him. Oh, I'll, I'll bring food. Oh, you know, whatever. Okay? Just be specific. And then number three, make your Bible statement to be, become intentional disciples. Most blessed to each other. Are we good, Mark? Are we good, Manny? Okay, this is a discussion question that we would like to have later. So we have our attention. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for um, showing us this very difficult, but nonetheless powerful message. It's not an easy to admit message, but we have to hear it. Here. And blind people will always um, be deceived. Blind people will follow their fallen nature, and we don't like to be like that. Lord, we want to really change our hearts. We want to make our hearts Christ like. And we'd like to commit to be the disciples of our family members. Would you honor that, Lord? Because we don't like spiritual blindness in our hearts. Make this vision very clear to us. The vision of becoming like your son, Jesus Christ. Most blessed in every way. So, Father, we pray for CCM Southern California. We pray that starting with us, you, you, you reboot us. You, you make us rebound from where we are. And make us understand that we're here together, not separated, not pursuing our own selfish agenda, but we're here because we want to become a blessing to the Southern California community. And Lord, we may be small right now, but we know that when we unite ourselves, like you said, nothing will be impossible for us. To do. And put your hand of blessing upon each and every family here. Lord, put your hand of blessing to remove the blindness in the hearts and then make them see the beautiful picture of us blessing one another. And when we do this, Lord, I pray that you will honor our commitment to bless them. Thank you. And you just, only you, Lord, will get the honor and the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for listening. And I really, really appreciate all of you. Thank you.